Here's five ways to make your winter wildlife photography awesome. This is five for Friday. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year. It's a wonderful time in the Northern Hemisphere for winter wildlife photography. And even if you don't live in a place where it's winter right now, perhaps you'll have an opportunity to do some wildlife photography when it's nice and cold later in the year, or perhaps you'll visit a place where you'll have an opportunity. As many of you may know, I was recently in Prince Edward Island photographing foxes, and then I went to Alberta for a couple of days to look for the wild horses there. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to Iceland to look for Arctic foxes and the Icelandic horses. In this video, we're gonna talk about five things that you can do to make your winter wildlife photography a lot better. Let's get started. The first thing to think about is that there's a lot of detail in the white stuff. What I'm referring to is the snow. The worst thing that you can do with a winter scene is to blow out your exposure and lose that wonderful detail in the snow. So while it is important that you generally do want to expose to the right, you want to expose for the highlights and make sure you don't lose that detail. It's important to remember that snow and ice have texture and they have color. The color comes from the snow or the ice itself as well as from the light that shines on it. You want to try to capture all of these details because they create interest in the image. To reveal these details, you may often have to pull back the highlights in post-processing. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. Here's an image with the highlight set to zero, and now let's pull it back to minus 100. Big difference, eh? Let's look at another one. This is with the highlight set to zero, and now minus 100. Just bear in mind that I'm using these as examples. You may not always need to or want to pull back the highlights that much. The second thing to think about is that in winter, less is more, more or less. What I mean is that in winter, you have an opportunity to create some wonderful minimalist scenes. You have a wildlife subject and a vast expanse of snow and perhaps some ice. This means that you really have to think about your composition, including where you place your subject in the frame and whether or not you want to have other elements in the frame. And if so, trying to ensure that those things are complementary to your subject and help to create a stronger image and don't just serve as distractions. So let's look at a few examples and notice that even when there's a lot of negative space, I've always tried to capture some detail some texture or some color in the snow or in the ice. Here's an example where there's a little bit more in the composition, but it's still a very minimalist shot. Now here's a few examples that are all landscape scenes. These don't have wildlife subjects in them, but I think they show what is possible. If you're interested in learning more about this, I have a separate video that's all about capturing minimalist winter scenes like these. Number three, make it snow. Nothing says winter like falling snow. However, it does present some challenges. The first problem we have is acquiring focus. It can be difficult sometimes if there's a lot of snow to get focus on the subject. Sometimes the autofocus will catch the snow instead. If you keep at it, you may still you may eventually acquire focus but you may have to switch to manual focus to focus past the snow and get onto the subject regardless of whether you're using autofocus or manual focus you want to be bursting a lot if for no other reason then you don't want to end up with a fantastic image where you have a bit of snow right in front of an animal's eyes the other thing to think about with falling snow is experimenting a little bit with the shutter speed to capture the effect that you want. I generally don't go any slower than about one two hundredth of a second, uh, and that is assuming that the subject is barely moving. 
So here are some examples. We have falling snow in all of these images and you'll see that the amount of snow that was falling at the time or the amount that I managed to capture depending on the shutter speed is different. Uh, but in every case it really does add something extra special to the images. The fourth thing to think about is snowy highlights. When you have snow you have wonderful opportunity to brighten up your scene capturing not just the snow on the ground but also snow on the animals when they come into contact with it or if it falls on them you have snow that the animals may kick up as they move and you'll also have snow that will be on trees or rocks or any other part of the scene besides the ground so here's a few quick examples showing snow on the animals or snow that they're kicking up and it really does make a big difference especially when the animal is not white and the final thing to think about is layering and creating depth. This is always true, but it's even more true in winter because it's very easy to end up with flat looking scenes with the foreground and the midground and the background all blending together if there's a lot of snow. I made a video on this previously. A couple of things to mention here. One is that when you're trying to create a more obvious separation between the foreground and the midground and the background. This makes it even more important to do this thing that I always talk about, which is to not shoot down on your subject. When you're shooting down on your subject, it effectively makes the ground into the background. And you don't want to do that. So instead, try to get low. And winter is a wonderful time to do that because you can lie down on the snow. The snow is soft and it's you know, you're not going to get dirty on the snow. Uh, and if you do that and you can shoot really horizontally, then you'll really capture the real background uh, behind the animal. Uh, the other thing is to look for elements in the background and the foreground that contrast with the subject and the midground. You may have to move around in order to, to find the right composition. And finally, try to create separation between the layers, uh, either using the aperture on your camera, if you can get a shallow depth of field, or with distance uh, between the foreground, midground, and background. So let's look at some examples. In this first shot, even though I wasn't able to get down to where the fox was and I had to shoot this from above, you'll see that there are still three obvious layers. There's a foreground with some bushes and the rocks, and then the snow where the fox is standing, and then behind the fox, you'll see water that also has rocks in it. And all of these things create interest and depth. In this next example, we have green ice in the foreground. The bears are on white ice behind that. And then in the background, there are rocks. In this next one, you have the bears in the foreground on rocks. Behind them are more rocks and trees. And then you've got this beautiful sky in the background. In this next one, we have water with reflection of the bear in the foreground. The bear is in the midground, And then you have an icy background in the distance. Now here's a couple of examples that are a little bit different. We're just trying to show the sense of scale in these. The bear is tiny in these photos, but you'll see that there is a foreground and a midground and a background, and they're all very different, very different textures and very different colors. Now this is a much smaller scale. The fox was very close to me, but again, you'll see a foreground of snow, and then there's a patch of grass where the fox is on, and then you've got snow behind that. And in this one, we have snow, and we have a bear on ice, and then we have a wall of ice. It was an iceberg right behind the bear. And finally, here's a couple of photos of wild horses. Again, you've got a very clear foreground and a midground where the horse is, and then a background that's different. And in this image, you have trees in both the foreground and the background but in the middle where the horse is you've got grass i hope you enjoyed watching this video if you have any questions or comments please post below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one